Habit 6. Synergize When properly understood, synergy is the highest activity in all life, the true test and manifestation of all the other habits put together. The highest forms of synergy focus the four unique human endowments, the motive of win-win, and the skills of empathic communication on the toughest challenges we face in life. What results is almost miraculous. We create new alternatives, something that wasn't there before. Synergy is the essence of principle-centered leadership. It is the essence of principle-centered parenting. It catalyzes, unifies, and unleashes the greatest powers within people. All the habits we have covered prepare us to create the miracle of synergy. What is synergy? Simply defined, it means that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. It means that the relationship which the parts have to each other is a part in and of itself. It is not only a part, but the most catalytic, the most empowering, the most unifying and the most exciting part. The creative process is also the most terrifying part because you don't know exactly what's going to happen or where it is going to lead. You don't know what new dangers and challenges you'll find. It takes an enormous amount of internal security to begin with the spirit of adventure, the spirit of discovery, the spirit of creativity. Without doubt, you have to leave the comfort zone of base camp and confront an entirely new and unknown wilderness. You become a trailblazer, a pathfinder. You open new possibilities, new territories, new continents, so that others can follow. Synergy is everywhere in nature. If you plant two plants close together, the roots commingle and improve the quality of the soil, so that both plants will grow better than if they were separated. If you put two pieces of wood together, they will hold much more than the total of the weight held by each separately. The whole is greater than the sum of its parts. One plus one equals three or more. The challenge is to apply the principles of creative cooperation, which we learn from nature, in our social interactions. Family life provides many opportunities to observe synergy and to practice it. The very way that a man and a woman bring a child into the world is synergistic. The essence of synergy is to value differences, to respect them, to build on strengths, to compensate for weaknesses. When you communicate synergistically, you are simply opening your mind and heart and expressions to new possibilities, new alternatives, new options. Many people have not really experienced even a moderate degree of synergy in their family life or in other interactions. They've been trained and scripted into defensive and protective communications, or into believing that life or other people can't be trusted. As a result, they are never really open to Habit 6 and to these principles. This represents one of the great tragedies and wastes in life, because so much potential remains untapped, completely undeveloped and unused. Ineffective people live day after day with unused potential. They experience synergy only in small peripheral ways in their lives. They may have memories of some unusual creative experiences, perhaps in athletics, where they were involved in a real team spirit for a period of time. Or perhaps they were in an emergency situation where people cooperated to an unusually high degree and submerged ego and pride in an effort to save someone's life or to produce a solution to a crisis. To many, such events may seem unusual, almost out of character with life, even miraculous. But this is not so. These things can be produced regularly, consistently, almost daily in people's lives. But it requires enormous personal security and openness and a spirit of adventure. Almost all creative endeavors are somewhat unpredictable. They often seem ambiguous, hit or miss, trial and error. And unless people have a high tolerance for ambiguity and get their security from integrity to principles and inner values, they find it unnerving and unpleasant to be involved in highly creative enterprises. Once people have experienced real synergy, they are never quite the same again. They know the possibility of having other such mind-expanding adventures in the future. Synergy is exciting. Creativity is exciting. It's phenomenal what openness and communication can produce. The lowest level of communication coming out of low-trust situations would be characterized by defensiveness, protectiveness, and often legalistic language which covers all the bases and spells out qualifiers and the escape clauses in the event things go sour. It isn't effective and it creates further reasons to defend and protect. The middle position is respectful communication. This is the level where fairly mature people interact. They have respect for each other, but they want to avoid the possibility of ugly confrontations. So they communicate politely, but not empathically. They might understand each other intellectually, but they really don't deeply look at the paradigms and assumptions underlying their own opinions and become open to new possibilities. Respectful communication works in independent situations, 
and even in interdependent situations, but the creative possibilities are not opened up. In interdependent situations, compromise is the position usually taken. The synergistic position of high trust produces solutions better than any originally proposed, and all parties know it. Furthermore, they genuinely enjoy the creative enterprise. A mini-culture is formed to satisfy in and of itself. Even if it is short-lived, the balance is there. Uh, there are some circumstances in which synergy may not be achievable and no deal isn't viable. But even in these circumstances, the spirit of sincere trying will usually result in a more effective compromise. The problem is that highly dependent people are trying to succeed in an interdependent reality. They're either dependent on borrowing strength from position power, and they go for win-lose, or they're dependent on being popular with others, and they go for lose-win. They may talk win-win technique, but they don't really want to listen, they want to manipulate, and synergy can't thrive in that environment. Insecure people think that all reality should be amenable to their paradigms. They have a high need to clone others, to mold them over into their own thinking. They don't realize that the very strength of the relationship is in having another point of view. Sameness is not oneness. Uniformity is not unity. Unity or oneness is complementariness, not sameness. Sameness is uncreative and boring. The essence of synergy is to value the differences. I've come to believe that the key to interpersonal synergy is intrapersonal synergy, that is synergy within ourselves. The heart of interpersonal synergy is embodied in the principles in the first three habits, which give the internal security sufficient to handle the risks of being open and vulnerable. By internalizing those principles, we develop the abundance mentality of win-win and the authenticity of habit five. One of the very practical results of being principle-centered is that it makes us whole, truly integrated. People who are scripted deeply in logical, verbal, left-brain thinking will discover how totally inadequate that thinking is in solving problems which require a great deal of creativity. They become aware and begin to open up a new script inside their right brain. It's not that the right brain wasn't there. It just lay dormant. The muscles had not been developed, or perhaps they had atrophied after early childhood because of the heavy left-brain emphasis of formal education or social scripting. When a person has access to both the intuitive, creative, and visual right brain, and the analytical, logical, verbal left brain, then the whole brain is working. In other words, there is psychic synergy taking place in our own head, and this tool is best suited to the reality of what life is, because life is not just logical, it is also emotional. Valuing the differences is the essence of synergy, the mental, the emotional, the psychological differences between people. And the key to valuing those differences is to realize that all people see the world, not as it is, but as they are. The person who is truly effective has the humility and reverence to recognize his own perceptual limitations and to appreciate the rich resources available through interaction with the hearts and minds of other human beings. That person values the differences because those differences add to his knowledge, to his understanding of reality. Is it logical that two people can disagree and that both can be right? It's not logical, it's psychological. And it's very real. You see the young lady, I see the old woman, we're both looking at the same picture, and both of us are right. We see the same black lines, the same white spaces, but we interpret them differently because we've been conditioned to interpret them differently. And unless we value the differences in our perceptions, unless we value each other and give credence to the possibility that we're both right, that life is not always a dichotomous either-or, that there are almost always third alternatives, we will never be able to transcend the limits of that conditioning. Ecology is a word which basically describes the synergism in nature. Everything is related to everything else. It's in the relationship that creative powers are maximized, just as the real power in these seven habits is in their relationship to each other, not just in the individual habits themselves. The relationship of the parts is also the power in creating a synergistic culture inside a family or an organization. The more genuine the involvement, the more sincere and sustained the participation in analyzing and solving problems, the greater the release of everyone's creativity and of their commitment to what they create. Synergy works. It's a correct principle. It is the crowning achievement of all the previous habits. It is effectiveness in an interdependent reality. It is teamwork, team building, the development of unity and creativity with other human beings. Although you cannot control the paradigms of others in an interdependent interaction or the synergistic process itself, a great deal of synergy is within your circle of influence. Your own internal synergy is completely within the circle. 
You can respect both sides of your own nature, the analytical side and the creative side. You can value the difference between them and use that difference to catalyze creativity. You can be synergistic within yourself, even in the midst of a very adversarial environment. You don't have to take insults personally. You can sidestep negative energy. You can look for the good in others and utilize that good, as different as it may be, to improve your point of view and to enlarge your perspective. You can exercise the courage in interdependent situations to be open, to express your ideas, your feelings, and your experiences in a way that will encourage other people to be open also. You can value the difference in other people. You don't have to agree with them. You can simply affirm them. And you can seek to understand. This concludes the Habit 6 Summary of the 7 Habits of Highly Effective People. Thanks for watching.